I now want to talk to you about an Ottonian gospel. And we do have um, a couple of works of art that are just uh, exquisite in their manuscript illuminations, very, very interesting, uh, that have an association with uh, abbesses from the early 11th century. This one is the Hitta Gospels, uh, and the name comes from the abbess, and we see here the dedication page, where you see the abbess Hitta offering her text, her codex, and that would be the book that we're looking at the page from, uh, her, her uh, Gospels. Uh, to St. Wallaburga. And behind her we see uh, a representation of the, of the abbey, uh, the convent, uh, in which, uh, which is St. Wallaburga. Uh, so this is the uh, uh, patron saint for the uh, nuns in the convent. Uh, this convent was in the area that today would be Cologne, Cologne in Ger Germany, the Rhineland. Uh, and the period that we talk about is the Ottonian period. Uh, the Middle Ages are, of course, divided into uh, other periods. Uh, the Ottonian period is uh, basically late uh, 10th, or it's maybe middle 10th, but it's for the 10th century, uh, into about the first quarter of the 11th century. So this is the uh, late uh, Ottonian period. It's called the Ottonian period uh, because the emperors were Otto I, Otto II, and Otto III. And then when Otto III died, a cousin whose name was Henry, Heinrich, uh, Henry of Bavaria, becomes uh, Henry II, uh, Second Holy Roman Emperor. Uh, and that would be his reign, although I don't know that he would have anything at all to do with this gospel, but that's just the time frame. These are two more uh, reproductions of manuscript pages from the Hitta Gospels. One shows Christ sleeping in the ship while the storm on the Sea of Galilee is going on and the apostles are very, very frightened and we want to take a close look at that. Uh, and then you can see a nativity. Now in both of the nativity and the, the uh, image you saw before, uh, really wonderful architectural structures in the backgrounds with lots of details and patterns. Uh, and the repetition of these uh, round arches. Uh, this was a period of uh, a great deal of building, actually, uh, including, I'm sure, her, her uh, abbey. Uh, so we see this uh, perhaps representing the town of Bethlehem in the background of the nativity. Uh, we see Mary, uh, it looks like she's asleep, uh, lying on a pallet. Uh, that kind of image we find in Byzantine art, as well as uh, Joseph uh, sort of uh, snoozing or uh, thinking uh, with this kind of contemplative pose where he rests his head on his hand and his uh, elbow on his knee. The Christ child is shown in a manger, and uh, the ox and the ass are watching on. There's a lovely uh, story that the ox and the ass warm the Christ child with his breath, with their there's a wonderful story that the ox and the ass warmed the Christ child with their breath. And you can see in this uh, the love, once again, of pattern. You see it in, even in Mary's uh, garment, where she's wrapped up almost like in a cocoon. And uh, one of the characteristics that you see in both of these pictures is the way uh, they've shown these long, hanging uh, sleeves. Uh, Mary's sleeve hangs down, uh, almost kind of triangle. Uh, and as you look at Christ sleeping in the ship on the Sea of Galilee, the same thing. Uh, his, uh, his sleeve is hanging down. Now, I should warn you about reproductions. Uh, we often take these pictures from different textbooks, or sometimes we purchase them. Um, in this case, they were taken from two different books. And this is the same image. Obviously, the color is totally different. Uh, the manuscript is in the Hessianisch Landesmuseum in Darmstadt, and I have been there for one day, but uh, it wasn't on display. I didn't see it, so I can't tell you which one is more accurate. My guess is the one that is less brightly colored may be more accurate, because after all, this manuscript is almost a millennium old, uh, and paint could have faded, uh, and you know, there could be dirt and other things. Um, but since the more brightly colored image is perhaps a little clearer, I'm going to show you that while I talk about it. 
Uh, this is the storm on the Sea of Galilee, and this is a wonderful, dynamic medieval picture and very original. Um, I don't know of any other examples that uh, look like this, you know, that it might have been copied from. Uh, we do know that manuscripts are often copied from earlier manuscripts, um, but we have no other examples of something like this. Uh, so uh, Christ is sleeping on the ship. The angels become very, very agitated. They wake him up, and then Christ calms the storm. Well, that's how the story goes. But you can see what they're showing is not the moment when Christ calms the storm, uh, but the, the, the period in which the boat is being tossed uh, by the waves. All we see is the water, essentially. Uh, you know, it's come up higher than the ship. You can see that the sail has broken away uh, and is flapping in the wind. Uh, that the, uh, the ties, the ropes that would normally tie it to the mast, uh, you know, are ineffectual. And it forms these wonderful curving shapes. And the paint, uh, we actually kind of see the paint strokes. It's very, very freely painted, which is pretty unusual for this time. Uh, so you've got a dynamic, active composition. One of the wonderful, uh, fanciful, but uh, just uh, marvelous things about this image is the boat. Uh, the boat reminds us, you know, have seen pictures of Viking boats with dragon heads. Well, here we've got a kind of dragon head, and it, the prow is actually a dragon tail as well, uh, which seems to be moving, and you can see the curve of the uh, tail of the ship, can you say that, uh, is coming up and uh, is repeated in the, uh, the uh, curve that is in the sail. Uh, and, you know, this is kind of wonderful di uh, di uh, diagonal movement with lots of curves. Uh, the boat itself seems to have come alive and just be uh, uh, writhing and tossing and pitching in the stormy sea. Uh, and then Christ himself is so calm. He's asleep. He's lying on his arm with this uh, wonderful pattern sleeve hanging down uh, and some decorative uh, dots uh, forming a pattern on his garment. Uh, he's the largest figure. He's the most important. Uh, he's certainly, uh, you see him because he's uh, right in the front of the boat. He's larger than everybody else. And of course, he has a, a large nimmed halo, the nimmed halo being the halo with the cross in it. Uh, the apostles look very worried. Uh, you can see, although they would be very, very small little faces, you know, you can see these uh, sort of exaggerated brows that really give you the sense of uh, emotion. And of course, every one of them has a gold disc halo. Uh, to show that this, they are saints, even if right now uh, they're a bit uh, worried. <laughs> well, they'll wake Christ up and he'll, he'll calm the storm. Um, we might also look here at the border. Uh, the border, once again, is very freely painted, this wonderful frame that goes around the image. It's, it's sort of a variegated uh, stone, except the colors don't uh, su suggest stone, at least in uh, this. Um, I think the color is hyped here, however. 